Scotty and Frothy is in the fi- second week of the finals looming. We've got to look back on the qualifying finals. Is that what they're called? Qualifying finals from week one of the finals where we probably learnt a little bit. Some entertaining footy, some very good footy played. How's Dana today? Uh, doing well, mate. Uh, I think, do they call them the semi-final this week? Isn't isn't it a qualifying oh. prelim semi? Or, oh, no, I think no it might idea. be semi then. The, pre, or is yeah, it qualifying last? Because next week's the prelim. Oh, fuck if I know. Last week were the qualifiers and I don't even know anymore. What's, what's wrong with quarters, semis and finals? But anyway. Yeah, exactly. Oh. That makes more sense that way. Um, no, nah, it was good games. Um, got got the four right. Yeah, same. So uh, that that Manly Bulldogs game that was definitely the game of the round, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, the Cowboys um, game was pretty entertaining. It could, it could have been closer. Well, it definitely wasn't boring. But, yeah. But uh, I, I, you know, end of the day, we're, there's probably two hopes, and the rest are playing for to get to next week. Pretty much. That's what it feels like, anyway. No real news around. The Josh had a car story is probably the only big one, which we don't really know apart from uh, the second positive. The second test came back positive. I guess we'll wait and see in his future. Uh, I've not followed it as closely as because I don't really care that much. Yeah, you know, I, I don't see him playing in a Bulldogs jersey again from what I've seen. And by the same token, I'm sure he'll have a job next year. So, oh, 100%. Um, ends up, he ends up. You know, the. I think they said Trindle got four weeks for being in possession or the high driving earlier of the year. Yeah. So I think that's what be could be expected. In a fine, um, I'm sure it'd be a compared to, fine. Yeah, like compared to Latrell, who only got like a week for, for his recent run doings. Um, yeah. But uh, the Bulldogs seem to be taking – they're more angry that he lied. Yeah. Um, so, but as you said, you know, if they get rid of him, someone else is just going to pick him up. I guess we'll wait and see there. And I, yeah, I saw there's some news around today. Jason Rolls potentially saying Gutho's their 14 next year. Whatever that means. Uh, have you seen any of that? Yeah, that, I've seen that. Well, that, that's probably got to do with the, the signing of uh, the, the Penrith Jr., the fullback. Hey, uh, I can't pronounce it. Yeah, that one. I think that's it. Um, it makes sense. Uh, in terms of, um, you know, he, he can pretty much fill most roles in the team, can play, go in nine, play 13 for a bit. Um, Cover both halves if he had to. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know how it works in terms of the captaincy, though. I don't like captains on the bench. Um, I assume so, a co-captain or Moses would just be given the captaincy. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how that works moving forward. Also read that, like, the Campbell Gillard situation – it was more not that he didn't want him this year. It's that he couldn't promise anything beyond next year. Right. Um, so it's I find it odd that they've parted ways, but Campbell Gillard hasn't got himself a contract yet, unless he's mutually decided to walk away from the last year with the Eels. I feel like there's probably – it was probably given the impression he did have a job somewhere and it's fallen through, whether it was Dragons or Broncos, I suppose, those are the two leaders. Yeah, because I'm just more thinking from the Eels salary cap side of things. Like, for, say if he was on 800, and as of right now, he's not signed anywhere else. Um, you know, does that whole 800 still come out of our cap, even though he's not at the team, the club anymore? Mm. Or if if it's a mutual, is is that cap space freed up? Good question. Maybe November one's the cutoff. Regardless. Yeah, sure. so it, it it will be interesting to to follow that one, um, and and to see exactly how that plays out. Um, you never get the full details of these things to know how much it's affecting your club when you're paying them to be elsewhere, which exactly uh, um, a lot of fans find quite frustrating. But um, yeah, it's 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 going to be you, you never know. He might be playing for a club that's still in. That's true, and that's why they haven't announced it. Yeah, and that's, that's why they haven't announced it yet. But, um, he doesn't want to stay in Sydney. Is is from what I've seen. Um, so there's still a handful of Sydney clubs that are still still kicking. I wonder what space Penrith have. I don't. I don't know how his bridges 
were intact after I don't they exited think, there. Yeah, yeah so I, don't, I, don't, I don't see him going back to Penrith. I, I could only imagine maybe maybe the Tigers now if it's Sydney, really, because Dragons seem to be have pulled the offer. Don't I wouldn't imagine Sharks have the money. I don't know. Although Royce Hunt's just left, maybe. Yeah. But again, he's not going to get more than two year deal anyway. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think. You wouldn't think so. Um, but you know, he he was clearly our best forward this year, mm. so he he can still do a job. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So that'll be interesting to see over the next. I, I'm, I'm sure we'll hear something. <coughs> you know, within the next four weeks. There's plenty of dominoes to. To, uh, no doubt, once one goes, there'll be six in the space of a yeah. few days. So we'll yeah, watch exactly. and, and learn that. Uh, <clears throat> not much, yeah, not much else going on apart from the usual whinging about where the final is getting played and the generic washed up, boring stuff you hear this time of year every year. But uh, the only other comment I'll make is, is it interesting how differently some games are officiated? I don't know why it's so hard, given the quality of some of these games, for it to be that way all year round. Yeah, I um, didn't want to talk too much about the officials, but at the end of the day, I think the f- I, I haven't seen a fan yet say G isn't the best. Yeah, and the fact that he didn't have one round one, and he's just he, he's done for this season is is a complete joke, and just shows the the boys club is back in full swing after it looked like it was gone once Sutton had left. I know, and Bennett's been quite vocal the last his last month, and yeah, we've talked about this too much. But um, there, I did have the thought that like really maybe they should be trying to throw a lot of money at someone like a Bennett to just have them run the refs, you know, like someone who's not a ref, but has been in football a long time. I don't know what are the names there. Obviously, Ben, someone like Bennett would be perfect. Dare I say a field goal, but someone like that with just some some nous and someone that's just going to, in theory, come in without any attachment to any referees and run run it that way would would I would think offer a better point of view. But Yeah, definitely. I don't know who that person might be without giving it yeah. some proper thought. I I I because they'd still somebody, need to be strong enough you know, to them, not come in. One and of just... them ex players that are probably yeah. like on the RLPA or something, someone that's still within the game, knows how all that type of thing works. Um it's not hard to pick up the law book and, and give it a quick once over to make sure you're up to date with everything. But somebody that's actually got a feel for the game to just have a better understanding moving forward. Exactly. I don't know, media is the obvious place for most of them, but there have to be someone around. I'd have to, I've just saw this, but I'd have to give that some thought and maybe throw it up. But I, I don't know if there's any intention to change anyway. So we're all talking crappy. We may as well talk some finals footy, I suppose. Um, and we kicked off, well, almost the pattern of the last four years is that Penrith have had a little flat spot before the finals. And they hit week one and it's all systems go. Nathan Cleary came back and it was 30 to 10. And they just came out. Uh, I think we suggested Rooster's best hope was to try and make Penrith chase. And it was just the other way around. Penrith played probably the best 20 minutes of footy, one of the best 20 minutes of footy all year and just gave them no hope. And belted them out of the game, played up tempo, moved the ball, had wingers cutting back in from the wing to, you know, they, which they rarely do for Penrith, trying all sorts of shots and just... Blew them away, really. What do you make of the start of this game and um, and how Penrith looked? Yeah, well, it, it was a tale of two halves because Penrith didn't really come out in the second half. They'd done the job in the first, and then it was almost like they already had one on the the prelim. Yeah, um, job was done. I'm surprised Cleary didn't go off a bit earlier than um, than what he did because of it. They, I will say, taking him off for two yeah. minutes ago just to get the standing ovation. Like, please, if you're going to take him off, take him off at sixty. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it was it, it was pretty much over after yeah the 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 fourth try, uh, Garner's Garner's first in the twenty second minute, um, and they did they just blew him off the park. Um, could it have been a different game if if that incorrect forward pass was called potentially? Um, but Maybe. I don't I don't think so. Um, even what that would have made the, the score 22, 16 at the time or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I, at, at no point, even if that had been awarded at no point, did it feel like roosters were going to get up or deserve to get up? No. And for the record, that should have been a try. Yeah. hundred percent. Uh, 
you run through like <clears throat> all the best players stood up. Liam Martin started the game great. Yeah, you obviously as a yo's yo. Uh, he linked with Cleary, he linked with Edwards, and they just did the absolute A grade of what they do. Both wings were very good. Tungo was good, and um, like, like up and down the, the sheet, they all just had really great games. Well, I, I think that was probably like uh, Panthers obviously wanted Cleary to get through, have a good game. But I think one of the the bigger points that hasn't really been spoken about because Cleary made it through is Edwards actually didn't look like he was playing that injured. He he almost yeah. got back to three hundred meters. Um. And it's underestimated how much he actually brings to that side. So I think Panthers will be very happy that the the performance Edwards produced. Um, and now he gets another week off to recover. Absolutely. Uh, any standouts for the Chooks you want to mention? Um, oh, Teddy. Apart from, yeah, the obvious. Yeah. yeah, apart from Teddy, you know, nothing really. Um, Manu has been... Disappointing, I would say. Well, I, was he Golden Boot last year? For the last before? couple of weeks now. But I, I would I say think he's, so, just, yeah. he's like, had a his whole season's not been what we've expected of him. I know he's been injured. He was injured and he's had a bit going on, but and suspended along the way. But I don't think he's ever really reached those peaks again of some of the stuff he produced last year. Yeah, it was just uh, yeah, quite a letdown. Uh, and it's not just been recent. That's been going on for a little while now. Um, Dom, in the modern game, you need your wingers getting more than well over 100 metres. Yeah. Um, you could see it with the Panthers guys. They, they were, you know, 100 and... Um, well, Taruva, 172. Brian Toto, 213. Then you've got a guy that's, you know, two foot taller than him in Dom Young, only getting 85 metres. Um, but as you, as you said in, earlier, yeah. the... They just bashed them out of the game early to the point Collins, 51 metres, Terrell May, 62, Nat Butcher, 69, Spencer Lenu, 69, Angus, 88, Thea Wong, 90. Like none of the forwards hit the 100 metre mark mm. apart from uh, White. Um, and if so, you know, if your backs aren't doing that, that job, which is so important in the modern game, and your forwards also aren't moving forward, you're just not going to win. Yeah. And, and it's, I think that's the key thing. The reason. Even whether statistically and ga- in, when you're actually watching the game, the parents' forwards look so dominant is because of what the work the outside backs do. That by the time they're back in line, they're close to their forty or fifty, and they can um, just go through their attacking work again. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I, I thought the Spencer Lenny not coming on until I think it was already twenty two nil by the time he come on. Yeah. Um, now Jared's back this week, going to make a bit of a difference. Um, so, uh, Dr. Clay on the bench for the Roosters. I don't know, get field. I don't know what the point is there. Yeah. Of having, like, is, is he purely there just for a HIA? I would say so. The fact he didn't come on, yeah, yeah it says yes. And so, I know, I know their, you know, injury toll is, you know, missing cheese, missing Sam Walker, which would have opened up, you know, Sanders Smith, I suppose, a bit more. Yeah. Etc. Et there's, there's another couple of obvious ones that would play in that role as well. Yeah, but uh, I just feel like you in a final game, especially yeah, that where, tempo against Penrith, yeah, yeah, at Penrith, um, where you get the second chance, I feel like you need to try and throw all your like throw every all your chocolates into the one basket and go for it. Yeah. And if you, you know, if an injury happens, it happens. That's why you get the second chance. Yeah. Um, and so and that, that, that's double, you can double that down with the Lenu thing in that if you're going to make Penrith chase, you had to start with your best, you know, cavalry. And, and that's it. It's almost as if they played knowing that they weren't going to win. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if it... He's obviously, obviously done a lot right, but I don't know if this has been his best coaching year in a lot of ways, Trent Robinson. I know they finished fourth and they finished lower last year, but... Some of those decisions are a bit head scratching, but we're not in the inner sanctum, I suppose. It, it seems to be coming out more and more every year now that it, the longer it goes, their their premiership drought that they're currently having. I I still think he's one of the more overrated ones. Yeah. Um, you look at the rosters that he won, like you you can argue about the salary cap till the cows come home. Like how do you how do you lose Mitchell Pierce but then have a million to spare? Yeah, for, for Cronk, like you know, considering the squads he's had. And that's um, why the last three years, I think everyone has tipped them to win the comp. I think, especially and, 
and that's it. And they're being tipped to, to win the comp due to the quality of squad that he's got at his disposal. And yeah, every, but every team, like he'll, he'll say injuries and whatnot, but every team's had injuries. Um, Melbourne played the majority of the year without their spawn and they still won. So the minor pe- so exactly. So uh, yeah, I, I actually think he's extremely overrated in the, the coaching department yeah. due to the early success that he had with the side that, You'd love to actually see the books and how do they afford them? Yeah. Uh, any other takeaways? I think this was a, a great statement game. I will say, yeah, players like us at Tango just had great games as well. Like if you, I think we really mentioned them, but those that, apart from the really spruiked ones, both those centers played well. They were able to isolate um, Tupanua a couple of times on that edge. Um, they just dominate, dominated some. What we're told, what are who are very good players on the Roosters team? Yeah, they. It, it was pretty much complete domination, apart from that little ten minute passage where the Roosters, um, you know, scored those two quick tries. Uh, but outside of that, it was just all Panthers. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second game, which happened in the afternoon, thirty seven ten, storm over the Sharks, and it's a little bit of same same here, but the Sharks are in this for a long time. Uh, what was it? 10, 10 all at uh, twelve ten at four half time. Uh, twelve, yeah, twelve ten at half time. Yeah, um, and then which uh, you know the the sharks like they they were down after a minute. They, they were literally playing catch up, and it, it was the same type of thing we said. They they had to <clears throat> keep Melbourne to as close to zero as possible for as long as possible, mm. and it, it, you couldn't have had a worse start, short of actually Melbourne scoring off the kickoff. Well. That kickoff went well too, but yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Um, but it's they they obviously knew the weaknesses of Nico and just exploited him uh, throughout the game, and it's it's getting to that point now where is he actually going to make it as a halfback? I, th- I and you don't do it semi final time. I can understand that. I think the conversation needs to be had, given different if you had a, a world-class fullback, but I think the conversation needs to be had over summer, whether he's better off going back to one. Yeah. And, and you know, in fact, to lay in the boot to Nico, uh, he got caught in the last, not necessarily his fault. I think that's what's really started the second half rot when he got yeah. wrapped up on the, on the halfway there and the Melbourne kicked it up a gear. Um, but there were some other kicking choices, some other plays. A beautiful play between the two halves to set up Nicker a try. But apart from that, yeah. it was a real nothing happening game for him. Yeah, it really was. Um, Iro and Talaka I thought were amazing, though, for the Sharks. Both senses. I thought they had an outstanding game. Iro, he is in the running for the Rookie of the Year. It's funny you mentioned I was actually talking to someone about the, the, this the other day. He, he almost, I didn't see much talk about him, but given Galvin's not, if we assume Galvin would win it, by daylight, if they're eligible at NRL level, we can pick who mm. we want when we do our awards. He probably has to be hero. I think he's oh, had a great. Year. I think he's been. I think he's been amazing. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just the simple fact that Galvin was so good and in the halves position that yeah. hero just hasn't been spoken about. I think the Sharks have found a real talent there because um, he looks like he just he gets in and does the dirty work. He he looks fairly good defensively. And and they say centers is one of the hardest positions to defend. Yes. Um, like I think he's only nineteen still, so he, he you know his best football is five six seven years away. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, if if I'm a Sharks fan, I want the, I want my club signing him for a long term deal as soon as possible. Good shout, uh, and I agree. I think he probably is rookie of the year at, at Daly M level, uh, and if you run through like who else is around Fletcher Sharp. Um, Jack Howarth, guys mm. that haven't really had full seasons, whereas he's he's the yeah. only one that's had a full run. Well, you got, uh, I think, a couple down of the 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 guys in Canberra. I think would be the only other ones. Yeah, that well, strange, close. strange fell off his cliff. Yeah, uh, they'd be the only ones that came close to playing the same amount of games as him. And then everyone else, they'd they'd be like the Blaze Talungi that only played the back end of the season. Yeah, yeah they came uh, and, and like came in like a house on fire. But he's had the runs in the board all season. Yes. Hundred percent, and to, yeah, Talangi would be the spruik one, I'd say. Mm. Uh, but again, what do you only play eight games at the end of the day? Uh, no, I think it was about half the season. Yeah. Um, but again, Euros played twenty uh, odd. Yeah, like it, it feels like he's been there since almost the start of the year. 
Uh, I agree for you. I'll just reiterate what you said about Nikore. He was probably the best with Talakai. And the rest, once they went into the, second ge- uh, into the next gear, weren't on the same level as uh, the Storm. Uh, you noticed early uh, Harry Grant making efforts to run in the first half. I thought um, it was quite noticeable. He was running a lot more than he had for a lot of the season. And I think it was – I think the ultimate was just to – really hammer that, that ruck area of, and really tire out the Sharks forwards and it paid off in the second half. And I know he was lucky to score. He, he got three, didn't he? And they're all results of luck. Yeah, first, he, first hooker to... Yeah. Was I that, don't know if it was just NRL era or ever, but first hooker to score three in a final. Wow. Uh, but I thought he had a, fan, a phenomenal game on top of that. Uh, Hughes was a bit quieter than normal, but it, ultimately his kicks led to most of his tries. And... Um, yeah. Munster was very good. Pappy good. They just were all in the right place, right time, and got the job done. Jack Howarth, another find. Very, very good player. He keeps going from strength to strength. Certainly Arrow topped the run meters. He was amazing. Yes, he was. In, in, a, in a side again that's playing against a side that's known for having an okay forward pack in the in the Sharks, to, to top the running meters, only being on the field for 60-odd minutes to, to get over 200 meters as a, as a forward – doesn't happen very often. Um, so, yeah, like that That and um, uh, I think it was, yeah, 26 tackles without missing one. So, you know, you can't ask much more from a forward. Absolutely. Uh, in games. You know, like, like, because of the score line and what happened with Grant and that, I think it didn't get spoken about as much as what it would have normally if it was a bit closer. And, you know, sometimes these forwards don't get the recognition they deserve, but I thought he had a blinder. And just to dominance of that, when you look at the Sharks and goes back to what we're saying about trying to wear out their forward pack, their, their, Teague Wilton led their run meters of 80, and that was it. Well, Talakai had only 65, sort of floating, but, yeah, that was pretty much domination uh, and a real statement. Which which team, did, was there a bigger statement, did you think, between Penrith and Melbourne, or that's what you expected once you get this time of year? Uh, if Penrith went on with it, I'd say that would have been the biggest statement, but the fact that they... Kind of just didn't come out of the sheds in the second half. Yeah, where the they're almost inverse games, weren't they? Like whereas this was the wrestle for half, and then and they, then they Melbourne went, went all key. right. Now, now we'll put our foot down. Yeah, exactly. So right. if, I, if anything, I think Melbourne's was the biggest statement because to the sheer fact Penrith was over before the thirty minute mark, where Melbourne had to go. All right, we, we've we've played in you know second gear here. Let's let's rev it up in the second half. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't think they had a, a incomplete set in the first half. No, I, I, did both teams not have one? There's only uh, definitely with five to go. There were both teams were completing at hundred percent. But Melbourne, I'm pretty sure, were, yeah, close to. Um, but that's what perfect. that's what you got to do. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, they didn't. It's not like they done anything fancy. They just done everything perfectly. Yep. Yeah. Um. We look forward. Well, they both get a week off. They probably couldn't be happier than that. I don't. Some way, some years that feels like a trap. I don't think it does this year. I think both clubs will be super happy to nurse everyone for another week. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. There you go. Storm completed at ninety five percent. Doesn't tell me the exact sets though. And the Sharks were at seventy eight. Um, you're going to struggle to win a game. Yeah. If you blow but 80 a lot most of that was, weeks. That was definitely second half where Sharks fell off that cliff. Yeah. But, yeah, you're going to struggle most weeks if you don't complete above 80. And if you a finals game in Melbourne, you you give yourself no chance to win. Exactly right. 28-16 it was the Cowboys over the night in an entertaining game. And if Dane Gage catches a, a ball with an open trial line, I think it's... Char, I think Knights would have gone ahead at that point in time. A couple of late tries. Uh, but yeah. neither team was – this was a, a completely different game. Neither team was afraid to throw the ball around. It was fairly entertaining. And Caelan Ponga might have put on one of the best individual individual performances all year, I thought, in trying to drag his team into this game. What do you make of it? Yeah, it was the Caelan Ponga show. Um, and this is what we know he can do. Um it was it, it, it's similar to what we said would happen. Plenty, probably just not as many tries as what we thought. Yeah. Just a lot of ball movement. Uh, you know, it was probably just 
what you'd say two or three tries less than what we assumed. Um, and some good scramble. They, they could have well been on both sides as well. And, and I think that's what that was probably the most surprising part of the game. There, there was a bit of scramble defense in saying that. What uh, Knights blew two tries, didn't they? Yes. I know the one that you're mentioning there, but I think there was another one as well. And it's a completely different game. Um, the, the, the picture going around online where Pong has made that break and on the inside is the semifinals and on the outside is Bali. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's, he's taken the wrong path. <clears throat> conversely, uh, just quickly on the Knights, um, yeah, sort of converse to Trent Robinson, you've got to say after how much we used to lay the boot to him, O'Brien's done a fair job to get them this far in two years, I think. I don't think this is the squad it was ever made out to be. I still think they need. If they had a top Cons- half, considering he doesn't know who his halves are two years right. in, and if to still that, make the concern. finals, he's it's okay. Yeah. Um, but but not knowing who your halves are are also an issue when you say it like that. It, it, it's it's a team that are they're rocks and diamonds across the board. Yeah. Um and. If the diamonds sparkle more than the rocks, they'll get the wind. But if it's vice versa, they lose. Um, and I think this was a perfect example. They had a handful of players that were amazing and then a handful of players that were just terrible. Yeah. Um, and it's just whether they can outweigh each other. Um, and I think that's why there's you know there's talk that there will be a few moved on and they'll try and move on a couple of those, those players that, you know, that are being a bit of an issue. They need to bring a half back in. Um, I heard last night they were talking, uh, SCN had a, that they were at least asking questions about Walker, which wouldn't be for next year. It would be for the season after. Which Walker? Sam. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, Braley, I, I believe he's on the outer. looks like they, it's pretty much going to be a swap deal to the Eels. Um, right. Because they took, they took um, Arthur. Yep. Um, but you know they've got some good players in that system. Tyson Frizzell, as good as he is, is probably getting on a bit. Adam Elliott's still going all right, but yeah, I feel like they're one of the those sides that when you mentioned the dominoes earlier, they could definitely be the start of that, where a couple of people move and they they could be yeah have have an effect in that domino scenario over the off season. They're a team I've not thought about, but. A lot, but when Tigers are trying to offload, say, five players, I wonder whether a Jaden Sullivan or someone gets mentioned, even yeah. getting him for half price or something. Yeah, definitely. I, I wonder if that's where it ends up. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I have, but what you said's right in you know, the ultimate Rocks and Diamonds team. Cowboys, sort of similar, but uh, their defence has gotten better lately, and I think their attack's been much crisper. Kyle Feltz had a fantastic retirement tour. Uh, yeah. where he was halfway through the year, and Val, we were calling washed halfway through the year. So they've had a, a fantastic finish to the season, as has Tualungi, who um, throughout our origin period was doing sweet FA in some games. The, the, all of their outside backs got in and, and did the work they had to do to set up what they had to do for the forwards, I thought. Yeah, definitely. Um, the The majority of the back... Well, Val actually had one... He only ran 138 metres, but the, the other four... Backs all ran for 150 plus. Yeah. Um, with felt almost hitting the 300 mark. Yeah. Admittedly, so, 100 of that was that the intercept, but yes. Yeah. It still counts. Um, you can only do what you can do. Exactly. Um, there was a lot of missed tackles. Yep. So you know, both from both sides, but like the cows, um, if they if they're missing that many tackles. This this week coming, they're in a bit of trouble. Oh yeah, absolutely. This this. I don't know. I'm going to think about this because I think they match up okay against the Roosters. That's the thing. But they've got they, they need to not. They can't afford to leak. Um, any other big takeaways? I thought Cotter was great again. Did and they were just all their players got through what they did. Tom Lally, a couple of big hits along the way. Um, one of the hits of the season as well. Um, a lot of these blokes had one of their better games for a while. Yeah, and that's the thing. Will they be able to build on this now? Because if they if they can build on it, the the roosters are right for them to to beat. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, it's it, it'll just be interesting to see how they, you know, if they can fix their defence up, it, 
it should be a good game this weekend. And as you said, the game of the round wrapped us up on Sunday, 24 to 22. Seagulls coming from behind against the Bulldogs uh, with a couple of late tries to get over the line in a very entertaining game. Uh, thoughts on this one? Um, I, I know Turbo ran for, it was it was a tick under 200 metres, but it felt like Manly were playing with 12. He, he definitely yes. did not look 100%. They're saying he'll be better now. It's an extra week on. Um, but I think it was, yeah, yeah that's that a great kick escape try was, um, um, That kick out try where he tried to sort of lead with the wrong shoulder and just launched himself. It was, yeah. That was one of the most telling things, I thought. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, it's that that the try uh, off the scrum was amazing. You don't see mm-hmm. plays like that very often. Um, and everyone and just, naturally, everyone the world just played their um, part perfectly. Yeah, but the world we live in now, the people are going back and looked at the video, and oh, the scrum wasn't done properly, and this and that. it's like tell them, no scrum is packed properly today. They may as well not have scrums. Exactly. Um, DC, DC has got the longest neck in the game. He could be standing two meters behind and his head's still in it. So it doesn't matter. It also, um, but that, you know, that's a bit like this day and age. It's a bit like people playing the, um, whinging about play the balls. Like nine yeah. out of 10 aren't played properly. So why get upset about the, you know, the 10th one? That, exactly. It's, you know, the uh, ref them all the same or don't bother. Yeah. It's, it's pretty much it. You, you, there's 20 scrums a game. You're lucky to see one of them that's done properly. The other thing I was happy with, uh, I've again a change in this, but I um both those contested bombs I've seen, I would have seen overturned in pre in club lands throughout the year. No doubt they would have found knock ons, but I'm I'm glad they didn't. But both felt sadly got the point where I just expected both to be overturned for a bobble or whatever. But yeah, if that was the consistency, I would be more than happy. Um, talking bombs. Why did Burden put his away? I don't know. He, he he put one up and he got a goal line drop out. Yeah. If like I I get that you can say it can be overused. But if you're 40 50 meters out do it every like but you, the worst that's going to the worst that's going to happen five is times they're going to you know what I mean like Yeah, exactly. Five, like the worst yeah. that's going to happen they're going to catch it and you're going to have a good line because you've had enough time to get down there. Yeah. Like, is he afraid of the bounce because people can't catch him and they're going dead? Yeah. Is that – like, that has to be the only worry. It's because bit... <laughs> the bombs are that good that his defensive line can get down there and they're not making any metres. And But we've seen times where we've used it six times a game and all six have been dropped in the last couple of years. Like, exactly. even when he was at Penrith, he used to yeah. – it'd be terrifying watching him go up. Yeah. And especially after he got the result. Tom's clearly injured. Didn't want to take. Didn't want to try. Lehigh, once you once and you see it so often. Once wingers drop a catch like that, their their confidence is shot. Yeah. And to not put it up again, just like I wish I could kick a ball like that. Hundred <laughs> uh, percent. Apart from that, they yeah, I I don't get it. And then even these two two point goals shots attempts, it's, it was almost like he half he. Wasn't confident it, hitting him. It was like it was like a chip shot. Yeah, and he still it still. They're both on target, I think. Like it was a hundred. It, it fell a meter short. Yeah, if he smokes that, it, it goes through. Well, the first one definitely goes over the black dot. Like, yeah, I, it was a, a bit weird. Some of those moments. Uh, kick out was great. That, I, to, I, to be honest, it felt like even though they do have a fair few players that have played finals, one grand finals, especially they have got you know half the Panthers side now. Yeah. Um, it, it felt like a bit of an experience in that last 15, 20, and that's what's cost them. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, and, and they'll be better for that experience. Obviously, they have to get back there. It's no guarantee. I don't think any year, yeah. but absolutely we're better for that experience. Uh, Reed lost his head for sure in that last half hour. Um, yeah. That got to him. And, yeah, as we talked about Burton, um, kick out terrorise that edge with, um, with Tommy and uh who was out there? It was Hop- 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 White, uh, Hop- White and Garrick, wasn't it, on yeah. that side? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, at the end of the day, it was four tries all. It, it was goal kicking was the difference. Like, yeah. it was a real close game that I think that if Bulldogs, especially like in the – like Sexton just had to take a bit more control yeah. of the game. And Reed should know better. 
you, you know, Manly kind of they they had a sniff once that push and shove started. Absolutely. And, um, and the thing is, if someone like DC, like you know, it only ever takes a spark. He's been through that many, he what, nearly forty origins and this and that. It only takes exa- a scuffle to it. fire everyone up. Exactly. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, you don't want to say if it didn't happen, they don't win, but it it'd be interesting. It did feel it, a lot like that. Yeah, because they had them in the court, like down in their own half on near the sideline. That like that's where you want to be defending, and then. Yeah, it kind of just let the the shackles loose for Manly. It took some tremendous balls to run that ball in the last for that last Kohler try. Uh, and that was an amazing try. Yeah, both those last tries were fantastic. So you got to give credit there. At DC yeah, decided to you know saw something and they pushed the pass instead of he could have just you know stabbed to a corner and tried again. And that was um, fantastic. And if you're a Manly fan, a try you'll long remember, no doubt. Uh, what else do I want to mention here? I thought Gerald Skelton was very exciting if you're a Tigers fan for next year. He did a very good game. Definitely. Could have yep. unlucky probably not to come away with a couple of tries. And if you're a Bulldogs fan, you've got every right to sort of be excited. Who do they pick up next year? We'll, we'll do a review. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm unsure, to be completely honest. Um, but you, it's the first time you've made the finals in however many years. You've got to be excited. Yeah, it's a shit way to go out, losing three straight. Um but at the end of the day, the, I think the disappointment is more due to the fact of they were looking so good yeah. in the middle of the year that, um, where if you sat down with a Bulldogs fan at the start of the year to say you're going to come fifth but or sixth, get a home final, but you're going to lose it in the dying minutes, most of them I'm sure would have taken that. Absolutely. And you see it's some of these clubs that have been out for so long, and I imagine it would be the same with Dragons and Tigers and that when they do hopefully ever get there. But to see the fan base reawaken, it's like they were so hungry for success and that was, you know, there was 50 plus thousand. I think this was another record crowd for uh, overall, aggregate crowd for yeah. um, this round of the finals for rugby league. So it's going from, it, it, despite itself sometimes, it's going from strength to strength, which has to be a good thing, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. Any other takeaways from this? It sort of one of the more physical uh, games, so a tough backup for, for Manly in a way, but poor Yeah, old. so the, my, my, my thing is, why do the Roosters get an eight-day turnaround and Manly get six? Like, Roosters played the first game. Yeah. I, I, and then it, they're, the fir- they're the first game this week as well where I, I just I don't understand – the logistics of that. Um, I don't know if it's. A, I'd have to go back and look at whether that was laid out before. Well, they've changed happened. it because of the AFL Grand Final. So right. Melbourne are now playing on the Friday, so they're not clashing with the AFL Grand Final. So I, I just as in next. I week. don't know, like. Yeah, as in next week, yeah, which okay. means the Panthers now get an extra day. Melbourne get one less. Not that it matters anything for them, but yeah, the the Roosters game. Whoever wins that gets one less day again. It's you. You want it to just be as even as possible, and one day might not. Well, that's seem true. Like actually, a lot. yeah, I hadn't thought of this, but you're right. If Roosters play the Friday, then it's seven day, seven day, isn't it for both? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it just the that pre whichever side would be playing that for uh, fr- this Friday night should be playing the Friday prior for the the, the prelim qualifier. So they get the extra day, and it, it just yeah, I don't know, just doesn't make sense that Roosters get two extra days off or whatever it was, or an extra day and a half, um, compared to the Cowboys, Cowboys Manly difference. Yeah, who are apparently uh, getting a charter. It's only, it's, yeah, it's only small, but down, at, yeah. at, this, at this time of the season, especially when their best player is injured, an extra day could be huge. True, true. Uh, we will do season reviews of all these teams. Next week we'll start on them. Uh, but we may as well preview while we're going. This uh, first semi final, the one in question on Friday night. Uh, in fact, it's not the one in question. It comes later. Uh, the Friday night game is the Sharks at Allianz. Uh, both games at Allianz, they are. God help us. Hope it doesn't they rain. Are. Man, it could be a world of trouble if, um, if there's any rain about. But anyway... 
we've got, I don't believe there is anything to be perfect weather, but Friday night is the Sharks hosting the Cowboys. Hopefully the Sharks fans can find it the 30, find a way to 30 uh, Ks up the road. They're whinging about that. But anyway, uh, what have we got here for the Sharks? No real changes there. Let me look at this. Kennedy, Katoa, Talakai, Iro, Mulatalo, Trindle, Hines. As we expect, Rudolph, Braley, Kafusi, Nicaragua, Wilton, New Guinness, Dan Eckerton still at 14, Williams, Hunt, Hazelton. Jesse Raymond is on an extended bench, so could come in for Talakai, which obviously will push one of those back rowers out I of the side. Wil- Wilton would go, um, and then Williams. You yeah, would William, Williams would go, for sure, yeah. Yeah. And then who starts? Uh, Drinkwater, Felt, Holmes, Valia, Talangi, Dearden, Clifford, McLean, Robson, Tamalolo, Lukey, Nanai, Cotter, McIntyre, Edwards, Finifuiaki, Neem. Sharks have won 30, 11 in the last 13 against the Cowboys, and the Cowboys have won three of the last four finals games against Sharks. Obviously, that's going back probably over a decade for some of them. Sharks haven't won a finals game since 2016, is the other question. <laughs> right now, <clears throat> you don't first crack at this, or shall I? So, so I was looking to try and see how often over the last ten years a side that lost the qualifier then loses the next game. Yep. Uh, Sharks are one of those sides, and I think the Eels were the other one twice. Yeah. So it doesn't happen very often. I'm sure. But there is a part of me that wants to actually tip both the upsets this week. <laughs> There's a part of me Which too. Completely going against all the statistics. Um, apart from, you know, this, you know, as I said, the Sharks were one of them. They actually lost to the Cowboys that first week of the finals. And Did then Roosters lost go straight the week after. A couple of years ago? Don't believe so. Not when I looked, unless I missed one. No, Eels had gone know. straight in the right. last 10 years. Eels had gone straight sets twice. Um, and the Sharks had done it uh, a couple of years ago when the Cowboys, I think, was that? That's when the Eels made the grand final that year. Right, um, okay. So was that two years ago? Yeah. I'm mm. um, looked wrong. It only happened so that was that three of the last twenty occasions the favourites have gone on to win. Um yeah, okay. there's been a lot of close games, but the, the, the lower side's only won three of twenty. I won't tip the in saying that in saying that I'm tipping the cowboys. Yeah. You can tell us why. <laughs> I, I, I think that the sharks are just—it's the halves. Yeah, they're they're going to be rattled from last week. Um, I just don't. Even if this was a shark park, I just don't. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. And again, they're only playing to lose to Penrith, uh, for both teams. Yeah. Um, but I just I feel like. The the very similar to what happened with the Melbourne game. Unless they're in front, they sort of just capitulate. Yeah. If it's close, and with the talent that the Cowboys have, it should be close. I'm just saying, was it recently? Um, what happened in the last round? Was that the one the Sharks? Either did Cowboys beat them at Shark Park? They when this year, or was that the one they blew them off the field and? Uh, Sharks smashed them early this year. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely hammered them. Uh, it was like 40 to 6 or something. Was that the only time they met? I'm just looking now. No, I I, th- I think the, the the games were even. I'm just trying to quickly find it. Yeah, yep. no, me too. Um, 42 6, you're right, in April. And Cowboys 20, beat them 30, in July is the game I'm yeah. thinking of. Um, and it was 30 yeah. 22 when they met up in Townsville. Yes. Um, that's when the Sharks were running hot and you would argue were up for fight for the minor premiership. Yep. Um, that's sort of what turned, um, turned the Cowboys around. Yeah. Um, but I just, again, like you'd love to have half that Sharks squad in your side. No doubt. But it's just, it's almost, well, it could be, you could say it's similar to that. Rocks and diamonds with the with the Knights. It's just they've always got a couple of good players every game, but it's a couple others just just let them down. And um, it's always dumb shit like it's Katoa putting his foot into touch, or it's someone throwing it's, the ball out the back, or you know not setting up, you know getting caught in the last. Yeah, 
get thing, and they, they decide that seem to always have the snowball effect. Something real small, and it just snowballs out of control. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Good, but, but at the same time, it's like that little pass. If it goes off, for example, that they they try to play with Melbourne. If they throw off that, they're absolutely flying. They're in the lead, and what ends up happening? Exactly. Uh, but we... they've they've had so many of those moments this season where it's gone the wrong way, and it just snowballs out of control for them. I agree, and I'm, I'm thinking the same way. So I'm going to tip Cowboys. I'm going to go Cowboys one to twelve. But I'm also going to say this will be a, a safe one to twelve. Um, I think they've got their back row working again now. Uh, Luke and Nana haven't really been with us. They looked good last week, and as you say, if they can score first and maybe in two tries, I, I can't see the Sharks chasing them down. Can I? Could, could the Sharks come out and physically dominate them? Yes, but I just one team feels more asc- uh, ascendant, and the other seems like. They've managed to finally paper some cracks for a couple of last weeks of the last six. The um, and one's coming off for hiding. See, so I, I don't feel, I, I don't feel as confident. Like the, um, yeah, I, I think it'll be close. I, I, and and it might just be because the way the Cowboys defend at times. Mm. I, I just don't. Yeah, I just oh, don't I, have that confidence the, to say. I still think it's going to be if you're taking. Overs fifty, you know, forty nine plus in the in the game. I don't think it's going to be potentially a six twelve game or anything like that. Yeah, no, no, I don't feel it being a low scoring game. Suits, but just, would, which would actually suit the Sharks. Yeah, I just don't feel. Uh, the there you go. Your overs is a forty five and a half, and it's paying a dollar eighty one. Okay, I think that's reasonable. Um, but, like it, it could be, it very well could turn into that manly bulldogs type game again. Mm. Where it both it could be up for I feel like it could still be up for grabs ten fifteen minutes to go for either side. And who's got the clutch? And, yeah, and and if it comes down to that, I'm saying the Cowboys. Beautiful. And then the Saturday night game, Roosters hosting the Seagulls. Also from Allianz, Jared Uri Hargraves is back into the starting lineup for the Chooks. You like like this, Tedesco, Tupo, Swali, Manu, Young, Kiri, Sandon Smith, JWH, Watson, Collins, Crichton, Tupanua, White, the bench is Wong, Len Yu, Butcher, and Terrell May. And same team as last week for the Seagulls, Tur- Turbo, Talao, yeah. Kula, Gary, Kopawade, Brooks, DCE, Paseka, Croker, Lodge, Olakowatu, Lawton, Trevojevic, Trevojevic, Aloe, Bullymore, Brown, no, yeah, no Saab or anyone else on an extended bench at the moment. Grant Atkins, apparently the second best referee in the game. The, we're just looking through here. James Tedesco's 250th game and yeah, not much else there. What are we doing here? Um, I actually just sent you a photo. Um, the Tigers have released a uh, a statement uh, congratulating Luke Brooks and his efforts in uh, playing a final. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> the fuck? Dead set. What are what are they doing with their lives? <laughs> um, Maria Hargreaves is off. Um, when I say off, he's on. And he will be simbined at some point. This will be his last <laughs> game in the NRL. Whether that is because they win or lose, uh, I'm not saying. I just. It, He's going to get done at some point. It'll be a high shot. Actually, the best thing that ha- can happen to Chooks fans is Ashley Klein not doing this game. Yeah, hundred percent. If if Klein was on this game, yeah, I'd, you'd, you'd, you'd dare right. say um, Manly would have been starting favourites. Yeah. Um, oh, I just think it's going to be if Turbo is at ninety percent, they win. Yeah, I'm sort of thinking the same. I think these match um, up pretty yeah. well. But again, it's the DCE factor as well. Yeah. Uh, pretty much like you said last game, he's been there, he's done it. Now, a lot of the, again, a lot of these Roosters guys have been in finals, they've done it. But Sandon Smith, the DCE, it, you know, what is it? 15 years experience difference. Finals, grand final winner, Origins, Australian representative, etc. cetera. Because um, Turbo v Teddy is the big matchup. Yeah. So if if Turbo is at 
at least ninety percent. I think they can. I think they can match them. Um, and with DCE leading it, I think they can get the upset. Just, uh, just quickly, a quick note: Victor Radley is in an extended bench, so he may come in. And we were talked about Docker Clay there, and he's dropping off is the other major change. But you'd almost say, in addition to Teddy, um, to your point, the you'd say if you're going to pick the form outside backs here, it's Cole or Hopawade. Well, yeah, hundred percent, and that and that was one of the things I mentioned with the 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 Roosters last game, like a winger only making eighty five meters yeah. in a game. Um, it's yeah, again, it's exactly the same. They're only playing to to lose to Melbourne next week, but um, Manly have beat them once this year. Uh, Roosters uh, got up in the other one by four points when it was at Allianz last time. It's it doesn't. It's another game that doesn't scream either side's going to smash one another in in terms of the scoreline. I, I feel like it, you know, it, it could be another one that's close. Where the other one was the overs, this one could potentially be the unders in a close game. I can see. Um, I'll go as far as say if Manly score first, they'll win. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to tip Manly for the sake of, of finishing my story. Um, and I can still see Roosters scoring first and being dominant for big periods and Manly sort of running them down. I just think once we get in that broken field, uh, you know, sort of hustle that just after half time, either side of the halves, there'll be some better running play out of Manly, which is really weird to say. But, um, yeah, I just think, they're again, their trajectory seems better than, than where the Chooks are at the moment. Yeah, definitely. Um, Roosters, like... They've got the forward pack that, that so they should dominate it. Yeah, absolutely. But they've also got a forward pack that can give away a lot of penalties very quickly. And, and also forward pack coming off a of bashing last week. Yeah, so, so the, one of two ways. So well, well, that's the thing. They might have a point to prove, which could just result in even more penalties. Yeah. And, and 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 that's the the issue. One of the big issues the Roosters have is normally when their forwards are giving away stupid penalties, they are for high shots. And they end up in the bin. Yeah. Um. And you just you, you you struggle in a normal game if you're down to ten, uh, down down to twelve for the for the ten minutes, let alone in a finals match. Um. If DC gets to play against twelve men for any period of time, he's just gonna he's either gonna tie the Roosters forwards out, or they're just gonna put on points. Yeah. Um. Well, and, think- and again, that that's yeah. that finals experience. Penrith half showed them how to approach this in that like early ball movement, just don't be afraid to get it out to centers and then move, sort of cut back in field and run at those props. Exactly. Uh, and if they do that, then it, that opens up what well, you mentioned DC, but it, you know, the Brooks's combination with those two, with the the fullback and the halfback it has been good this year. Yeah, definitely. Across the board. Like it's the starting lodge, so you know, they're expecting some aggression. Very, I think it's be a very good game. And, uh, I'm, yeah, well, I've said Manly. What's your final word? Yeah, I, I again Manly one to twelve, but I, I, I think this will definitely be the lowing, yeah, lower scoring match of the of the two. Um, but again, I, I like I don't see Manly blowing them away. They're not going to do what Penrith did and score four in twenty minutes. No, 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 no. Um, it's going to be a lot tighter. Um, and again, like with a bit of luck, it, it's another game that's got you on your edge, edge of your seat for the for the entirety. Absolutely. I, oh yeah, I can see a last five minute result happening here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like again, no, very, so yeah, very similar to the Cowboys win. Like, there's no confidence in it. I just feel like both games are going to be close down to the wire, and it it could very well be something similar to like that Cola try, where it, it you know it, it could be a Roosters guy that pulls it off though, but it could be that late, you know, last five minute type thing that splits the splits the game. Um. Goal kicking, Garrick being unbelievable. So, so is, I think I saw it was twenty two in a row at Allianz. So you know if the tries are, if the tries are scored, the goal kicking might, like both sides pretty much got by sixes. So it'll be very interesting to see how close it does get. Um, and again, that's where Manly get another tick in the box because DC will just control his team around to where they need to get, so we can set up for a field goal if if that's what it comes down to. Absolutely. Should be a cracker. Uh, a final thought. It, 
of these four teams we've discussed in the preview, is there any with a hope to win the comp or is it it's just that they're just cannon fodder for next week? I I, I dare say they're both cannon fodder. Um you you could argue Manly might be able to push Melbourne a little bit more. It, it's almost yeah. It's almost like if if, if actually you, no, I will. Ma- you had... Manly will push Melbourne more than what the Roosters will. Hundred percent, they will. That's um, a, if you had to make a case for one team, yeah, I, I would almost make it for Manly. Yeah, and that after you know. They after lose, the lose, tigers, yeah, lose it to the Tigers. Yeah, yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, if you if you're comparing the four left and who they would be lined up to play the next week, none of them are. You know, either way, I'm looking 13 plus at both games next week. But you would say that if one of them was to surprise you, I would say Manly would be that one. Especially given all the history and all that other bullshit that goes comes along with it. And and exactly. Um, and then arguably, you'd say the next one would be the Cowboys, which is possibly why I've gone the tips that I've gone this week. I probably agree with you, to be honest. If you got, if I was going to line them all up, Sharks would be last, and then I'd work up from there. And yeah. Which which is funny because Sharks on their best day can beat Melbourne and can beat Penrith, but they, but I just don't see it happening in a finals game. Yeah, very interesting to see where the Sharks head. They haven't lost yet, so let's see. Um, let's see they might come out and we put forty on them, and who knows? We'll all be in awe. But wouldn't that make next? That, you, you wouldn't be upset if that happened either. No. It's like you say, we got the tip wrong and they won by forty because then they've built the confidence to go ahead and play Penrith. Yeah, and that would make that game a lot more interesting than the way we're looking at it right now. I guess all we can do is wait till next week and talk about what happens, and then uh, prognosticate some more. Anything else you want to finish up on? No, that's it, mate. Um, I think I don't really think there's anything else. The nothing else to really chat about it at this point. No, um, no it's, we're just waiting. Looking to forward to the awards next next week. Yeah, um, send, in, um, send them your thoughts. So, coach of the year, uh, rookie of the year, we'll both just give our opinions. Uh, obviously, the Daggy M team will get off Greg at some point. He'll fill us in on all that. Yeah. Uh, what else do we normally do? Any other thoughts worth mentioning? You know, any uh, matches of the year, performances of the year, even? Yes. Just send them in the comments below. But. Otherwise, we'll uh, look forward to running off those and uh, discussing all of that. And uh, we'll have a bit more time with only a couple of games to talk about to get stuck into some reviews as well. Sounds good. Thanks, mate. All good. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And uh, we'll chat again very soon. Catch you guys.